Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Koss and in this tutorial we're going to be discussing how to crop a single image as well as multiple images in Lightroom, as well as how to perfect our images by reducing lens defects like geometric distortion, chromatic aberration, and vignetting. I'm going to start here in the library module. You can see that I have a collection of images targeted. And although I can use Quick Develop to change the crop aspect ratio of my image, I think we're going to want more control than that. So let's go ahead and move to the Develop module. The quickest way to access the Crop tool is by using the keyboard shortcut. In this case, it's not the C key, but the R key. And I try to remember that by remembering that it is the Crop tool, and it will rotate and resize your images. So R for Crop. If you don't want to use the keyboard shortcut, you can simply click on the Crop tool here underneath the histogram. Once we select the tool, you can see that we have some different options here, but let's just talk about the basics. First of all, you'll notice that as soon as you select the tool, you get a crop overlay, and you can click and drag on any of these anchor points to change the crop. Or, if you simply want to drag out your own crop, click and drag anywhere in the image. Now by default, the aspect ratio is locked and it's set to the original aspect ratio. If I want to unlock it, just click the lock icon. Now you'll notice that I can drag out any size crop. Once I've settled on a crop, if I need to reposition the image, I just click and drag the image to reposition it underneath the crop marquee. When I'm satisfied with the crop and I tap the return or enter key, that crop will be applied. However, nothing I do in the develop module in Lightroom is permanent. So you'll notice if I tap the R key again, all of the rest of my image is still there and I can modify the crop at any time. If I need to rotate my image, I can do that in many different ways. The easiest, however, is simply to position your cursor outside of the crop marquee and you'll notice that it turns into this double-headed arrow. Now I can click and drag in order to rotate the area inside my crop. I can also use the angle slider right here or I can use the angle tool and actually click and drag, for example, if I had a horizon in my image that I wanted to straighten. I've also got a crop overlay. You can see the the little rule of thirds that's being displayed there, that's controlled underneath the tool menu under Crop Guide Overlay. By default it's set to thirds, I actually prefer the grid, so I'm going to select that. But I don't need the grid to show all the time, so I'm going to return back to Tools and go to Tool Overlay. Instead of always showing the grid, I want to select Auto Show. Now you'll notice that as I'm dragging the crop tool, or when I'm clicking and dragging to straighten it, that's the only time that the overlay will appear. All the rest of the time, I can simply see my image. If I have a specific aspect ratio in mind, I'll turn the lock icon back on by clicking on it, and then choose from the list. Or, if I need to enter in a custom value, I can do that as well. For now, I'll choose 4 by 5. I'll reposition my image, and then tap the Enter or Return key. Now, if I want to apply that same crop to multiple images, I can select them down here in the film strip, and then click the Sync button. There are a variety of different things that I can synchronize as far as cropping. I can synchronize the straighten angle, or the aspect ratio, or both by clicking on the crop. When I click Synchronize, all of the selected images will have that same crop applied. Then it's very easy for me to choose these other images, and if needed, tap the R key to show the crop, and then reposition that crop and tap the Enter or Return key in order to apply it. Excellent! Let's go ahead and move to this next image where I want to talk about how to reduce your lens defects like geometric distortion and chromatic aberration as well as vignetting. You'll notice in Lightroom 3, 
On the right-hand side, we have a panel called Lens Corrections. And there's two areas, the Profile area and the Manual area. Now this image was photographed with a 24 to 105 lens, and it was set closer to 24, and that's why we're getting this distortion in the front of the building. In order to correct that, I will enable the lens profile corrections. Because Lightroom can read the EXIF data of this image, it knows the make and model, and therefore can apply the correct profile automatically. As you can see, we've created profiles for a number of different Canon as well as Nikon and Sigma lenses. But obviously it would be impossible to create profiles for every single camera and lens combination. So we've created a utility, the Adobe Lens Profile Creator Tool. It's a free utility that you can download from labs.adobe.com. And basically there's directions for how to print out some test charts, photograph them in a few different ways with the camera and lens combination that you're using, and then load those files into the, the Profile Creator Tool in order to create that profile. I think that the utility for creating your own custom profile is an excellent way that photographers who might be using maybe a less common lens and camera combination will be able to create their own profiles and then share them with the community. Okay, let's move on to this next image here. Here we can see that I need to enable the lens profile correction, so I'll turn that on. But that only fixes the distortions in the actual lens. What it's not doing is it's not correcting the perspective correction. In order to do that, I'm going to switch over to the manual area. Now in previous versions of Lightroom, we had the lens vignetting and chromatic aberration, and we still have those options. But now we also have the options to transform our images. So in this case, I'm going to need a little bit of vertical distortion. So I'll start moving my slider to the left here in order to decrease that, maybe to about 18 or so. One of the nice features is that when I have my cursor positioned on top of one of these sliders, I get the grid overlay. When I move my cursor away from the slider, that grid overlay will automatically hide itself, but it's nice to have it accessible when I'm actually moving the slider. I also want to change my horizontal scale just a wee bit, maybe over to about 5 or so. All right, and we can toggle this on and off. There's before, and then there's after. Now, in the lower left-hand corner, you can see as I've made these transformations, I've got a gray area here appearing. There's a variety of different ways I can take care of that. If I wanted to, I could take the image into Photoshop at this point and use the Content Aware Fill in order to try to fill those areas. Or in Lightroom, I can simply click to constrain the crop, and Lightroom will crop out the areas that don't contain any information. If I wanted to apply those same settings to multiple images, I would select them down in the film strip and then click Sync. I can synchronize all of my lens corrections or I can just synchronize the lens profile corrections. In this instance, that might be a better idea because each one of these images might need different transformations. Excellent. Let's take a look at one more example. Now, before I enable the lens profile corrections, I want to zoom in on this image. You can see here that this photograph has a lot of chromatic aberration in it. And that occurs when you're shooting with a wide angle lens, especially on the edges of your file in really contrasty situations. So I want to remove that, and I can do so by simply enabling the lens profile correction. However, let's zoom out. We can see that I've removed the distortion, the chromatic aberration, but I've also removed the vignetting. This amount area down here at the bottom of the profile area allows me to kind of turn up or turn down the volume of the distortion, chromatic aberration, or vignetting. Well, I think it's done a great job on the distortion and the chromatic aberration, but I actually liked the vignetting that I was getting in camera. So I'm going to dial down the amount of vignetting that is being corrected by the profile. So these are kind of manual overrides to the profile that you apply. Now obviously this image needs a little bit of manual work as far as the perspective correction. 
So let's go ahead and do that as well. I'm simply going to remove some of that perspective distortion and then also remove the horizontal distortion. Excellent. If I wanted to add a little bit more vignetting, I can either lighten up the edges or darken down the edges. And of course, I can bring my midpoint more towards the center of my image to kind of pull your eye into the center here. I can also combine this by using the Crop tool. Tapping the R key, I can go in and I can crop this down a wee bit and adjust the crop as needed. To apply the crop, simply tap the Enter or the Return key. Excellent! That wraps up this session on lens correction and perspective correction as well as cropping in Lightroom. My name's Julianne Cost. Thank you for joining me. Thank you.